మళ్ళీ మళ్ళీ చెప్దాం ఓకే ఎపిసోడ్ నంబర్ వన్ జీరో నైన్ ఓం శుక్లాంబరధరం విష్ణుం శశివర్ణం చతుర్భుజం ప్రసన్నవదనం ధ్యాత్ సర్వవిఘ్నోపశాంత రామాయ రామభద్రాయ రామచంద్రాయ వేధసే రఘునాథాయ నాథాయ సీతాయ పతయే నమ ఓం డియర్ ఫ్రెండ్స్ వీఆర్ సీయింగ్ ద వాల్మీకి రామాయణ వీ ఆర్ ఇన్ దిస్ అయోధ్య కాండ వీ వర్ రీడింగ్ సర్గా నంబర్ వన్ జీరో ఫోర్ సర్గా నంబర్ వన్ జీరో ఫోర్ విచ్ స్టార్ట్స్ విత్ ద లైన్ తమ్ తు రామస్సమాజ్ఞాయ భ్రాతరం గురువత్సలం సో స్టార్టెడ్ విత్ దట్ లైన్ తమ్ తు రామస్సమాజ్ఞాయ సో హియర్ వాట్ వీ సీ ఈస్ భరత హ్యాస్ బీన్ రిక్వెస్టింగ్ రామా టు కమ్ బ్యాక్ రామా ఈ సేయింగ్ నో ఐ క్యాన్ నాట్ కమ్ బ్యాక్ సో యూజువలీ వీ ఫైండ్ దట్ ఫర్ ద సేక్ ఆఫ్ కింగ్డమ్ పీపుల్ ఫైట్ త్రూ అవుట్ హిస్టరీ వీ సీ ఇఫ్ వీ సీ హిస్టరీ ఆల్ ఓవర్ ద వరల్డ్ ద బ్రదర్స్ హెవ్ ఫాట్ బ్రదర్స్ హెవ్ కిల్డ్ ఈచ్ అదర్ ఇన్ ఆర్డర్ టు గెట్ ద కింగ్డమ్ బట్ హియర్ వీ ఆర్ సీయింగ్ ద బ్రదర్స్ ఫైటింగ్ ఆర్ ఆర్గ్యూయింగ్ విత్ ఈచ్ అదర్ ఆన్ ద పాయింట్ ఆఫ్ ధర్మ యూ హ్యావ్ టు బీ ద కింగ్ యూ హ్యావ్ టు బీ ద కింగ్ ఈచ్ వన్ ఈస్ సేయింగ్ యూ నో యూ హ్యావ్ టు బీ ద కింగ్ దట్ ఈస్ ధర్మ సో వెన్ యూ ఆర్ లిసనింగ్ టు భరత యూ ఫైండ్ ఓకే ఎస్ భరత ఈస్ టెలింగ్ రైట్ వాట్ భరత ఈస్ సేయింగ్ ఈజ్ రైట్ then when you listen to rama you find, you feel oh yes rama what rama says is right so it is like a judge listening to two advocates in a court so two advocates they give their arguments and each man is giving in a brilliant way and when you listen to this man you feel yes it is he seems to be right the other man also you hear and you feel yes he is right so finally rama tells he makes an overall assessment and tells no it is not right it is not right so this is what is dharma so he tells um, he tells you know you have to do this so he tells bharata and then bharata has to get convinced so that is what we are going to see <coughs> so we are seeing that rama was saying na dosham tvai pashyami we are seeing this sarga number 105 somewhere in the middle na dosham tvai pashyami i do not see any ayota of bad in you i just do not see, there is absolutely no adharma there is no stigma in your character and 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 you don't criticize our mother because he has been criticizing he has been uh, shouting at his mother or ill treating his mother na chaapi jananim balyatvam vigarhitum arhasi balyat out of out of uh, innocence or ignorance balyam is either innocence or ignorance <laughs> balyat because of the childishness you should not uh, criticize or you should not ill treat our mother please do not do that because mothers they do have a right they do have a right to take care of their children in whatever manner they want they in fact they may sometimes go out of the way they may sometimes go out of the way in order to take care of their children and kamakaro mahapragnya gurunam sarvadana the shastras actually they to some extent they do permit the elders to take care of their children by all means and elders have all the authority the sentence or the sentence also means the elders have all the authority to command their children సో కామకారో మహాప్రాజ్ఞ గురూణాం సర్వదానఘ ఉపన్యేషు దారేషు పుత్రేషు చ ఇన్ ద మ్యాటర్ వెదర్ 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 ఇట్ రెజర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ రెస్పె విత్ రెస్పెక్ట్ టు ద వైఫ్ ఆర్ విత్ రెస్పెక్ట్ టు చిల్డ్రన్ పీపుల్ హ్యావ్ ఆల్ ద రైట్ అండ్ వనేవా చీరవసనం సౌమ్య ద కింగ్ హ్యాస్ ఆల్ ది అథారిటీ విస్ ఈస్ ద కింగ్ హ్యాస్ గాట్ ఆల్ ది అథారిటీ టు సెండ్ మీ టు ద ఫారెస్ట్ యూ షుడ్ నాట్ యూ షుడ్ నాట్ ఫీల్ బ్యాడ్ అబౌట్ ఇట్ దెన్ రాజ్యేవాపి ద కింగ్ హ్యాస్ గాట్ ఆల్ ది అథారిటీ టు సెండ్ మీ టు ఫారెస్ట్ విత్ బార్క్ క్లోత్స్ or he has got all the authority to keep me on the throne then yavat pitari dharmagnye gauravam loka satkrutam just as we respect our father similarly we have to respect your mother also tavad dharma bhrutam shreshta jananyam api gauravam janani janani means the mother jananyam api gauravam you have to respect the mother also in the same way just like you are respecting your father you have to respect the mother also then etabhyam then you have to and etabhyam dharma shilabhyam and i have been commanded by them by the father and the mother i have been commanded to go to forest and you have also been told you have to stay in ayodhya and you have to rule the king has ordered so and departed to heaven he says evam krutva maharajo vibhagam loka sannidhav in the presence of all loka sannidhav means in the presence of all he made this declaration and it is like a judge giving a judgment and probably the judge is transferred once the judge is transferred it does not mean the judgment is invalid 
judgment still holds, judgment doesn't invalid if the judge is transferred. So our father is like a judge, he has given a judgment, he has made this sort of apportioning and he has gave this order and then he has departed to heaven and we have to, we have to obey that. Such a pramanam dharmatma, he is the authority, such a pramanam, pramanam is something which has to be followed. Pramana, in fact, it is actually a paribhasha, it is actually a technical term in um, Vedanta and also in Nyaya Shastra. Nyaya means logic, in the logic, pramana is something that is uh, the means of valid knowledge or rather the valid means of right, valid means of knowledge is called pramana. For example, I am seeing this thing in my, with my eye and my eye is the pramana for witnessing this particular object. So, pramana means something which you have to jolly well believe, you have to trust, you have to take it. So, that is pramana. Such a pramanam dharmatma, our father's word is pramanam, we have to actually follow it. So, Raja loka gurustava. Then, my duty is to stay here, chaturdasya samas samyam. For 14 years, I have to stay in the forest and upabhokshye tu aham dattam. Then, my duty is to stay here and you have to go, go back and enjoy and be there in the kingdom. So, this is what is the arrangement which has been made by the father. So, this sarga also is a small sarga, it concludes. And we come to one not uh, five, five, sarga number 105. Again, Bharata pleading to Rama. This goes on for some more time. <laughs> so, this 105, five, sarga number 105 starts like this. Tatah purusha simhanam rutanam taisuhrudganaihi. If your text reads like this, Tatah Purusha Simhanam, that is the right text. So, then while these people, they were all discussing all through the night, they were discussing all through the night and Shoshatame Varjani Dukhena Vyatya Vartata, the night passed off with great difficulty in the sense that it was a long, long night because all through the night nobody slept, they kept on discussing, it was like that. And Rajanyam Suprabhatayam Bhrataraste Surudvrataha, when it was dawn, then again all the people they went, Mandakinyam, Hutam, Japyam, Krutva, Ramamupagaman. Again as we see Valmiki is always very very meticulous about describing various performance of duties. We have seen, I have been saying that Valmiki is like a screenplay writer, writing down everything. So he says, Mandakinyam, Hutam, Japtam, Japyam. So he, they all went, all the brothers they went and then they made their offerings in the fire. Probably they have created some fireplace and then they offered uh, hutam, uh, ahutis. And then japyam, they also did some japa. And krutva, rama upagaman. Because in those days, probably, we are now talking about Rama's days. Rama, the days that it is time, it is called treta yuga. And prior to that is krutha yuga. And probably in each uh, yuga, the way of, uh, I mean the emphasis, was changing from uh, one type of uh, devotion to another type of uh, devotion. For example, uh, changing pattern we can say, changing patterns in various religious observances. That is in the Krutha Yuga, the people were more concentrating on tapas. Krutha Yuga, all the rishis which we talk about, uh, whom we, about whom we talk about in Upanishads and all that, they were doing tapas. When it came to Treta Yuga, there was more uh, yajna. There is some ritual, there is a fireplace, there is offering of yajnas, etc. Tretayam, yajan, tretayam. And Dwapara, there was a more predominance of bhakti. Dwapara Yuga, this Krishna age, there was a predominance of bhakti. And Kalau Sankirtanath, now they say, we also hear this line, Kalau Sankirtanath. In Kali Yuga, if you just do Sankirtana, some sort of bhajan, etc., it is good enough, that is what people have said, probably to console us, that if you are not doing yajna, or if you are incapable of doing yajna, don't feel bad, at least to do some bhajan. <laughs> that is basically, we see that religion also comes down and down and down with the, along with the changing society. In Kurta Yuga, the people did tapas. And when people for, became more ritualistic in nature, probably they were performing more yajnas and what not. And after that, when yajnas also became rather, rather difficult, because yajna means you have to have so many, so much of... Uh, material. With all that material, it is a rather difficult thing. Without that material, it is difficult. So, when uh, Dwapa, in Dwapara Yuga, we see that uh, Bhakti, Bhakti is fine. Then even that, when it is burdensome, then uh, Sankirtanath Mahati, you go to some bhajan center and then you do some bhajana. <laughs> so, these are all the changing uh, patterns in this religious observances. That is what we see.
But of course, we also see that even now there are some people who perform yajnas. Even now there are people who do this japa, dhyana, tapas, etc. We see people who do tapas. So that means the, the, the man who is in the man who is doing tapas is in Krita Yuga. The man who is doing yajna and all that, he is in Treta Yuga. We can think like that. So anyway, Mandakinyam Hutam Japyam, they performed all these rituals and then they came back. And Bharata, then he started speaking. Santvita Mamika Mata. That is, he is again talking about his mother. You have, uh, by, with uh, all respect for my mother's word, with all respect uh, and also uh, in order to please her. Santvita, Santvanam means to make somebody happy. In order to please my mother, in order to please my mother, you have given away the kingdom. Santvita Mamika Mata Dattam Rajyamidam Just you have done this basically to please my mother. Tad Dadami I am just giving back to you. I cannot rule because that mighty kingdom cannot be protected by a person like me. He says, Duravaram Thvadanyena. Apart from you, nobody else can rule that mighty kingdom. And he also compares himself to just like uh, a donkey cannot run alongside a horse. And just like a small bird cannot fly alongside Garutman. Garutman, we know that Garuda, a small bird, an ordinary bird cannot compete with Garuda. A donkey cannot compete with a race horse. So I am, I am like that. I cannot compete with you. Anugantum na shaktir me gatim tava mahipate. Gatim khara iva ashvasya. Khara, khara means donkey. Ashva is horse. Tarkshyasya eva patatrina. Tarkshyam is garuda. So I am so weak. I am so infirm. I cannot, I cannot rule. I cannot take up the kingdom. And in fact, our father wanted you to be the king. Sayada Pushpito Bhutva. Our father wanted you to be the king, and that is his long cherished desire, and you have to you have to follow that. Not only the father, but all the sections of the people. Srenaya, Srenaya Swam Maharaja, Pashyantva, Griyascha Sarvashaha. Srenaya, Sreni means all the categories, so many categories of people. This particular Sreni, that particular Sreni, so many categories. For example, business people, some other people and um, warriors, various categories of people, they all want you. Different sections of the people, they want you as the king. And when he said that, all the people, assembled people, they all felt very happy. Bharata is such a dharmatma, he is following dharma, he doesn't want to snatch the kingdom, because they also want that Rama has to come and rule. So they, they felt, uh, appreci they appreciated. Tasya sadhvit yamanyanta, sadhu, sadhu, sadhu means very well, very good, very good. So they all said, Nagara Vividha Janaha. Then Rama is again, Rama, it is now Rama's duty to convince. So now Rama, we see, he is slightly trying to philosophize the whole uh, situation. So the, he, there is a situation now, Bharata doesn't want the kingdom, Rama cannot take back the kingdom, so that is the situation. So Rama is trying to slightly convince Bharata by philosophizing the whole thing and then, okay, you have to take it philosophically, you have to go back. So, final, his final objective is to convince Bharata to go back. So, he is saying, Vilapantam Yashasvinam, okay, Na Atmana Kamaka Rosti Purushoya Manishwaraha. He says, man is somebody who is guided by fate. A human being is such a small being. He is guided by fate. Fate means, well, here, of course, we have to very, very, be, we have to be very careful in using the words like fate and fatalism. We are not talking about fatalism here. I'll read the shloka first. Ana atmana kamakarosti purushoya manishwaraha itaschetarataschenam krutanta parikarshati. There is a word called krutanta. Krutanta means krutam means karma. Whatever is done by us, krutam. Krutam is whatever is done by us. That is our karma. Krutanta anta means the phalam, karma phalam. And karma phala data, we define God as somebody, karma phala data, we say. God, according to our tradition, he is not somebody who is whimsical. That is, God, okay, I am giving you this, you are my devotee, I am giving you this, you are not my devotee, I am throwing you in heaven, in hell. So, he, God is not like that in our system. God is only a karma phala data, whoever you may be. If you are doing good, you will, you will get good result. If you are doing bad, you will get the bad result. So, that is why we say, Ishwaraha karma phaladata, that is what we say. So here, we are, that means we are bound by karma. In that sense, we have, to say, we have to see. We are bound by whatever action we have done. Karma means whatever action we do, that gives a result. And we are bound by that result. 
and it does not mean that we are so totally de determined. There, there are two words in English called determinism and free will. Determinism says you are programmed, you are structured to function in a particular way. You can't deviate from that, you can't go beyond that. That is what is called fatalism or de determinism. You are determined, you are programmed, let us say, to use a modern expression. So you can't deviate from that. And there is another word called free will. A human being has got all the free will to do what all he can do. So in our system, there is a combination of these two. It is neither determinism nor free will. It is, it is determinism to the extent that my birth is governed by whatever karma I have done earlier. But I have all the liberty, I have got all the free will to change my course. I have got all the free will to go to a guru. I have got all the free will to study this. I have got all the free will to know, uh, to have this self-realization. So that is why all the shastras are there. If there were to be total fatalism, suppose a man is so totally programmed, if it is so totally structured, and then he can't deviate from that, all the shastras are a waste. All the shastra which talks about Atma Vichara, Bhagavad Gita is a waste, Upanishads they become waste because if it is mere fatalism and you, okay, you are going in that line only as dictated by fate, then all the shastras is, are waste. So that is why the shastra, our texts say, the karma phala is only giving you some birth and thereafter you have got all the freedom to choose, all the freedom to go in the right way or in the wrong way. So that is what is that is what we have to understand. Itasya enam krutanta parikashati. The karma phala he put it places a person in a in a particular place and the man is not altogether he says man is not altogether independent, he is guided by karma. And that is what has happened to our father also. Our father, he was a very, very great man, very great man, but his karma phala, it has come into come to that level. And Rama, as I said, is philosophizing slightly. Sarve kshayanta nishayaha patananta samuchrayaha. I am reading some shlokas because some shlokas are very often quoted. They are also quoted because they are quite uh, popular. Sarve shayanta nishayaha. Whatever you accumulate, all that is like, it is going to decrease only. Whatever you accumulate, it is going to decrease. And patananta samuchraya, all heights, whatever you rise high, again there is what is called rise and fall, the rise and fall of empires we see in history. Always one empire is not at the peak, all the, like all the empires, they rise and fall, the human beings also, it is like that. Patananta samuchraya, it is like the wheel of time. That wheel of time, it is moving, you are going up and coming down, it is like that. And samyoga viprayogantaha. Sanyo, this line also is quoted quite often. Samyoga viprayogantaha. And there is so much of happiness when, you, when people meet. And after some time there is separation. <laughs> not, not that marriage and divorce, I am not talking about that. So, various we see in human interactions. So many times we, we come across, there is so much of friendship, born homie and all that. After some time we don't know, we, we, we get separated. And we never again come in contact with one another. It happens like that. And yatha phalanam pakvanam nanyatra patanadbhayam. A ripe fruit. A ripe fruit, if you see, what, what will happen to a ripe fruit? It has to jolly well fall down. So similarly, a, one, a, a human being is just born to die. Yatha agaram drudhasthunam. And any great edifice you build, any great monument you build, it has to fall. One, some day or the other, it has to fall. And sahaiva mrityur vrajati, saha mrityur nashidati. A person, a death is said to be a constant companion for, a human, for the human being. Sahaiva mrityur vrajati, mrityu, that is a death, it comes along with us, it travels along with us. Saha mrityur nashidati, a human being, along with mrityu, he sits, he walks, gatva sudirga madhvanam, having travelled a long journey, that is this life is a long journey. This life is a very, very long journey for so many number of years. In this long journey, we die and again come back along with the mrityu. This line is interesting. Saha mrityur nivartate. When you come back to the next life, when a child is born, it is born along with the death. Because when a child is born, saha mrityu, along with the death, it is moving along. So, as uh, all through the life, the death is a constant companion. This shloka also is quite uh, quoted well. And... People, people, they are always optimistic. They don't see the passage of time. The, the passage of time. That is what he says. Nandat yudita aditye. Nandat yastamite ravau. 
udite aditye that is suppose there is a sunrise you are very happy oh there's such a night nice uh, dawn and uh, nandati nandati means he feels delighted a human being he is delighted at the sunrise nandati astamite ravo when there is a sun sunset is again very very happy sometimes we go when you go to some uh, tourist spots uh, there is a place called sunrise point so all the people they go thousands of people they go there and then they see the sunrise from a particular place similarly there is a sunset point suppose you go to a place like mount abu i suddenly i remember mount abu there is a sunset point all the thousands of people they go there and see the sun set from that particular place a nice view of sun setting and you feel so happy feel as though you have achieved something so but we are not realizing the passage of time that's what valmiki says atmano navabuddhyante manushya jivitakshayam this passage of time that one day you are nearer grave that is what we are not, we are not thinking and similarly he is talking about uh, the human relations human relations again yatha it is he is he is comparing it with uh, two pieces of wood which just come in touch with uh, each other in this ocean suppose there is a mighty ocean in that ocean there is a lot of drift wood and so much of material will be there they're just floating around and in that in that in that drift wood two pieces they come together they stay for a while and then they just get separated similarly the human relations are also so transitory transitory means so ephemeral so impermanent yatha kashtancha kashtancha the very powerful shloka which is quoted quite often yatha kashtancha kashtancha samayatam maharnave arnava arnava means an ocean in this ocean of life the two pieces of wood they come together they just uh, travel together for some time they get separated yatha kashtam cha kashtam you know kashtam is a stick kashtam cha samayatam maharnave sametya cha vyapeyatam they just come together they again get uh, get separated kalam asadhya kanchana so what he wants to say is human relations are very very transitory but dharma is something which is permanent dharma is guiding this ocean of life and in this ocean of life each person whatever however brief the interaction may be that interaction should be in accordance with dharma that is what he is going to say evam bharyasya putrasya think of your bharya your sons your gnyatayah your relatives all these people they are like yatha kashtancha kashtancha somebody whom you never knew becomes your husband or your wife and then you travel together for some time and then you get children and then they they are there and again you pass away and then they after some time they after when they grow up they may or may not bother for you so all these things they, they happen evam bharyascha putrascha gnatayascha vasuni cha every man is on his own every person is on his own then yatha hi sartham gachhantam bruyat kashchit pathisthitah he is again comparing this life to a caravan caravan is uh, caravan is a group of people a group of people just traveling to some destination they have got some destination they are just traveling going and going and some people join in the middle and some people bro- drop out some join and some others drop out he says yatha hi sartham gachhantam sartha sartha means a caravan this is this life is like a caravan in this caravan of life people join and drop out gachhantam bruyat kashchit pathisthitah somebody who is standing by he says i will also come aham apyagamishyami i will also come he says uh, travels for some time and again goes away evam purvair gato margah pitru maitam hodhravah when this is the case when this is the case of human life then dharma is something which is eternal and what is dharma pitru paitamah that is whatever has been followed by our pitru paitamah pitru means father pitamah is grandfather that means whatever has been followed by our ancestors that is what we have to follow tama apanna katham shochet yasya nasti vyatikramah we have to follow that there is no escape from that and our father again he is coming back to dasharatha he says dharmaatma sashubhai krutsnaihi our father he observed all dharma sashubhai krutsnaihi so many he did so many kratus kratuhischa apta dakshinaihi kratu kratu means yajna kratu another name for yajna is kratu then apta dakshinaihi and he gave very liberally he very liberally he gave so many things to people and dhuta papah all his sins are washed away dhuta papah all the sins are driven away and our son, our father has ascended to heaven then karma bhishtu shubhai rishtaihi kratu bhishya apta dakshinaihi again he is saying so many several 
great deeds and good deeds he has come and nasha nacha sana soch sa nashoch pita tata svargatas satkrutam sata satkrutas satam we should not grieve our father's death because uh, our father has done all great deeds and he has ascended to heaven basically all this he is saying just, just a few minutes ago or maybe one day ago they all cried out aloud and on the next morning rama is teaching some little bit of sobering sometimes we also call it mashana vairagya when somebody dies somebody someone when people are grieving some elderly man comes and then says oh all this is inevitable all this is something which one has to go through all human life is so transitory this is called smashana vairagya people talk about three types of vairagya one is smashana vairagya that is when somebody dies another thing is called purana vairagya suppose you are you have gone to a satsang and in that satsang some swami ji says oh this life is very ephemeral and what not he tells geeta he tells some other upanishad and then oh life is so ephemeral if that is again vairagya you have to develop vairagya etc then another third one is interesting that is prasu prasuti vairagya prasuti means when a woman of course nowadays women may get offended prasuti vairagya anyway in olden days what they said was when a woman gets pregnant and at the time of delivery oh this is so horrible i i should not have any type of uh, relationship with a man again with my husband again so that is what that is a vairagya and then immediately after some time again naturally they will have again uh, they will have the normal life that is called prasuti vairagya but the real vairagya should not be of these three types smashana vai should not be smashana it should not be prasuti vairagya it should not be purana vairagya it should be a real vairagya vairagya as a result of vichara vedanta says vichara has to lead to vairagya vichara means an enquiry an enquiry a logical enquiry into the nature of things a logical enquiry into what is a human personality what are human relationship that is so that way one has to logically enquire and develop dispassion vairagya means dispassion you do all things with all energy with all energy one has to do vairagya does not mean you become very lose slack and then uh, you become totally inert vairagya does not mean inert vairagya means a person who is having vairagya may be more active than a person who is not having vairagya that is what geeta says geeta says a person who knows or a person who is in the gyana path he has to do all things in a much more in a much more active way there is a wonderful shloka in geeta sakta karmanya vidvamso yatha kurvanti bharata somebody who is attached to a attached to work somebody who is passionate about the result and somebody who is selfish a person a person who is selfish he works with all enthusiasm but a realized person a person who is having vairagya without being selfish he is equally active kuryad vidwan tatha asaktah asaktah means without selfishness without selfishness you have to do chikirsur loka sangraham in the interest of welfare of my people in in for the welfare of people you are supposed to do as actively a selfish man actively pursues work a selfless man also has to actively pursue work so that is what geeta says not only the selfish person but also the selfless person has to do work in a more active way so that way then he says nasho nasho uchcha pitra then sajhirnam manusham deham parityajya pitahinah so that our father he has left this body jhirnam manusham deham this human body daivim buddhi manu praptah daivim buddhi manu praptah means our father has has attained a new sharira he has left this sharira here he has attained a new sharira what is this new sharira brahmaloka viharini we talk about three sharira's that is what we call the gross body the sthula sharira as we say and there is what is called a subtle body subtle body means the mind the sense organs etc that is the subtle body which are not seen subtle means something which is not seen and there is something called karana sharira which people talk in philosophy so these three bodies these are three levels the sthula sharira when a person dies the sthula sharira remains here sthula sharira is not going to heaven it is the sukshma sharira the mind and the sense organs which are said to acquire a new body it that new body may be in this world it may be in a heavenly world or it may be in a, a rather uh, adholoka or some sort of heaven, hellish world so we'll see it tomorrow similarly uh, rama is going to philosophize in a few more shlokas we'll see tomorrow hari hi om tat sat